Last week we left you on a cliffhanger. Who is going to be my co-host this week? I won't leave you waiting any longer. Let's find out in episode 156 of the Parkrun Adventurers. Can you tell who it is just from my ta-da? I can. You I wonder can. if the listeners can. Yeah. I think you might also be able to tell from the fact that you you knew ahead of time anyway, Scotty. Yeah, yeah I had a couple of other giveaways. <laughs> but you're back, Mel. We thought, I thought you wouldn't last much longer, but here you are. Hey, One more look, week. Scotty, you, it. It was you, it was my obstetrician, it was my yoga instructor. Everybody thought I wouldn't be here this week. Um, so I buck the trends. That's what I do. And, hey, I, I'm going to bring something to, to everybody's attention because I did have a couple of concerned people get in touch with me after the podcast last week to see if I was feeling okay because I sounded terrible. And I had to – Yeah, I had to explain to them that – um we actually recorded early in the morning last week and obviously you're a morning person and you still have your stellar morning voice, whereas I just sound sick. <laughs> so, and you being my co-host should have brought that to my attention so I could have gone and had a drink of pineapple juice or something to, mm. you know, warm up the larynx. Um, but this week you sound a bit poorly, Scotty. What's going on? Oh, look, it's been an absolute crap couple of days for me. Um, but let's not dwell on that. Let's not dwell on that. Okay. A bit under the weather. And when I sound, say you sound poorly, I, I mean, the voice is still pretty good. It's just different. Good. So I think, I think we can make it work for you. But I'm sure you'll get some messages telling you to feel better anyway. Look, I have – and, and look, I'll, I'll tie this into um, the tales of the weekend because it all went downhill around uh, – for me anyway – Particularly after juniors, but on Saturday, I went. I went down to Berwick Springs Park Run. Um, shall we do this now? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Please Berwick tell me about your weekend. Um, yeah. Well, last week we said I was going back to Berwick Springs after a six-year gap. Um, not much has changed. Park's still there. Still looks beautiful. Community is still intact and loving Park Run. There was a um, Michael was celebrating his two hundred and fiftieth Park Run, and I think he was at the first event at Berwick Springs that I was at. So there was some, some nice synergy there. But we were there celebrating the um, Medibank Park Run hero, Tim. And we, we, had, we, we dressed him up, made him look a bit silly, put him in a cap and a bandana and made him look like a superhero that he is. Um, and everyone else got uh, buffs. You might have seen these on social media, Mel. If you haven't, you need to get along to um, – well, first, you need to nominate your Park Run hero and then hope that they come to your event because we're giving out these uh, Medibank Park Run buffs that I think will be pretty popular. Cool. Always um, handy through the winter. Yeah. yeah. And I had, had some great chats with some um, volunteers there, uh, the event directors and the ambassadors for that area. It's always good catching up. But after that, I had a bit of a, a, bit of a rough old day on Saturday, fronted up to um, juniors on Sunday, not feeling well. And then after that, it just all went tits up for me. And, and I did end up in the hospital. Didn't want to. But I uh, went in for, for a bit of a checkup because things weren't working and they said, you need to get to ER pretty, pretty quickly. Um, Does anybody really want to end up in hospital? No, no. And it's, it's a frustrating experience, Mel, because you just – you wait. You spend a lot of your time waiting. Then they test and then they scan and then they take bloods and then they tell you that nothing's wrong, basically. Or well, something's wrong, but they don't know, so – Go away and hope for the best. Okay. Um, so it's just it's going to put a little bit of a limit on my running over the next uh, couple of weeks, potentially. Mm. Okay. Well, you know, there's a difference between having a few weeks off and taking things easy to ease back into running and then going all out and dying. And therefore, yes. you can't ever run again. So yeah. I think let's err on the side of taking things easy. Um, yeah, as much as I love running, I like living a bit more at the moment. So I'm gonna I'm gonna err on the side of living. Yes, let's do that for the next couple of. And months. look, you yeah. you cannot you. I know I'm female, 
However, I have witnessed enough man flu. I'm actually surrounded by it in my own home at the moment. It's taken down both the men in my house. One's a toddler yep. and one's a full grown one and they've both been very man flu y. So, you know, you can't underestimate the power of man flu. And if that's what you've got and or anything else more serious, then you know, you've got to take these things seriously. Mm. Okay. Look, I hope hope to God it's just man flu at this stage. But Give me some good news, Mel. Some did you have a great park run day? Good news. Yes, I did have a good park run morning. This was, um, well, you know, Wesley was sick, <laughs> but Adam wasn't sick by that stage. But it, was, it wasn't it was too cold or anything like that. I was volunteering. Uh, however, I did. Did you go to Yarra Bilba? Why would I go to Yarra Bilba? Did I mention going to Yarra Bilba last yeah. week? Yeah, you, you were sleepy last week. Yeah, you said you were going to go there. Did I? Yeah, when they were they, they were having their anniversary. Oh, they were having cake, weren't they? Cake, yeah. Obviously, didn't entice you that much. Well, no. The thing is, I am erring on the side of not being too far away from the hospital where I am hoping yeah. to deliver my child at the moment. <laughs> so that's a good idea. Yeah, that's a good idea. So everybody's erring on the side of some kind of caution at the moment, and and that's my cautionary tale is. Let's not go too far away from the hospital where I would like to deliver the baby because um, if you end up finding yourself in a hospital that's further away from home, it's not as convenient for um, anyone, basically. So, okay. yeah. So, no. So, you're back at home just, at Kiwana. Yeah, stayed close to home, volunteered, uh, did the first time as briefing and got to welcome all. We're getting a lot of tourists still. I don't know what's happening. Like, it's not particularly – was last weekend? That wasn't – Tourism's big, Mel. Tourism's big. There's this podcast that promotes it a lot. And I think it's just taking off. People want to tour all year round. It doesn't have to be a seasonal thing. No, there doesn't, it, there doesn't have to be a long weekend or any other kind of excuse. I mean, it was Mother's Day weekend. Maybe, maybe that had something to do with it. I don't know. I just feel like there's a lot more adventurers adventuring out and a lot more first-timers – even though the weather is cooling down, I don't know about you guys, but it is getting a bit cooler up here. Um, you know, jumpy jumpers and um, flannelette pajamas have all been cracked out, and you know, we've had to buy new winter pajamas for Wesley because last year's winter pajamas only reach his elbows and his knees. So um, that's all going on at the moment. But I'm really impressed with how many people are still showing up at Park Run for the first time even though it's cooler. Hmm. Hey, can I ask you a question about, so you did the first time as briefing. So this is a new role. I think we've talked about it a little bit before, but there, can you can you tell us about, there's a few more roles that have been introduced into the volunteer roster of late and encourage teams to do. One of them is the first time as brief. So tell us why, and you did it, why, why we should do it. Why we should do it. Well, yeah. Uh, there's a few reasons. So, uh, I mean, we've always done one at Kiwana, uh, whether or not that's been the run director doing it or we had a dedicated volunteer, um, which we kind of embraced uh, well, several months ago now, actually, um, because for starters, it's a nice way to introduce some people to volunteering. Um, it's it's a role that doesn't require technology, which can, I understand, scare some people. So it's, it's a nice gateway role from that perspective. Um, but it's also an opportunity for people who might not feel comfortable talking in front of big crowds to still have a chat to, to small groups of people. Um, some people are more sociable, so that's just kind of a role that would suit them more anyway. But you always get the people who it is their first time either at Park Run 100%. They've never been to one at all. And I don't know if you remember back to your very first Park Run, Scotty, but I didn't know what the hell I was doing. I was nervous. I, no. I needed a little bit of guidance and a little bit of reassurance and um, having a dedicated briefing for the first timers that didn't involve the whole crowd um, just to let us ask questions if we needed to, um, to allay any fears, wonder what the hell we were doing with this little piece of paper that had a barcode and our name on it. You know, do I need that at the start? Do I need that at the end? Like, what's the course like? And all that sort of thing. It's um, It can be really quite nerve-wracking. I like the idea that it appears on the roster too. So if you are a first-timer 
And, you know, if you're really anxious about going and you, you look at the website to death to cover all angles and then you see that there is somebody there who's going to give you the first time as briefing, I think that's going to allay some of your anxiety and, and hopefully make it a, a welcome place. I mean, I've, I've, I think I've talked about my, my first park run wasn't great the very first time I went to park run. I, I, I liked it enough to, to start my own event. Um, but there was a bit of a gap between those two things happening, no, wasn't there? There was. And there was a bit of a gap in what should have been a great experience on the day and what actually happened on the day. And I reckon um, through, the, through the years and the experience of Parkrun, we're, we're filling in that gap, hopefully, so that the first time experience for a lot of people is a lot more uh, enjoyable than I'm sure we've all heard. We've all heard stories of first time experiences have gone wrong. Yeah, well, look, and I mean, you, we're never probably going to get it 100% right, but I think it's a, a big positive step in the right direction to have a dedicated volunteer. And you're right, people people who do do things for the first time um, often do a bit more research on the website and, yeah, seeing, seeing the dedicated role there, that will also be a help and an encouragement. Um, but it's also true, you know, it's, it's really nice to be able to welcome adventurers and tourists from other places and things like that. And that's part of what the First Timers Brief does as well, you know. It makes people feel comfortable away from their home event and makes them realise that while every park run is different, um, you know, essentially we're all the same as well. So, um, and it points out, you know, a lot of the safety things about the courses and things like that. Um, and yeah, like I said, gives people the opportunity to ask questions um, where they might not feel comfortable and it might not be appropriate in, in the general big brief that gets done before the event. So, plus, you know what I love about doing it is you get to see the faces and, you know, clock the people and go, oh, that person, okay, they're wearing this shirt from that run club or, you know, they're in those shoes. And then when you see them finish afterwards, you can actually ask them how they went and you have a lot more um, freedom, I guess, to to be able to identify those people and it's not just – or who don't I know, I'll go and have a chat to that person. But if you're the person who's performing that role and has introduced people to your course, then it's a lot easier for you to cheer them over the finish line and then grab them when they, you know, can breathe again and um, actually ask what they thought of the course and did they enjoy themselves and, you know, hopefully have a chat and get to know some new names. Now, for some of our other listeners, our keen park runners who love to run every week, there's another there's another role that we're encouraging people to do. Yeah, there's another new role which is a bit cool. Um, which is also something that I I think has happened a lot, um, in different places, um, for safety reasons as much as anything. And another role that's probably been performed largely by run directors as well as part of their role, and that's the the pre-event course check is that I'm not sure if that's the exact title of it, but that's effectively what it is, is somebody who goes and checks the course out before the event in the morning. Um, so often we have people who do this anyway because they have to go mark up the course. You guys do it at Westerfolds. You've got to go put signs and things like that out. Um, we don't have signage that we put out at Kiwana, but we do um, – you know, check the course to make sure that there aren't fallen branches or things like that. Often um, in the past, it's probably been done more um, just following inclement weather for a lot of events, but it's it's standard at the majority, I would expect. Um, so it's another opportunity. And see, this is another beautiful thing about both these roles. People can perform these volunteer roles and they can still run or walk or jog. And so they'll get credit for both. Yeah, what I like about it is that we're broadening, so we're, we're sharing the load. So we're, we're some people just don't want to timekeep and and scan and finish tokens. It's just not what they want to do, but they can definitely see themselves running around the course beforehand, doing their warm up if you want, but also helping out by just checking the course and making sure everything's a okay. And I, and I like this the fact that now it's going to be open for everybody, so it's not just the onus is on the event director and the event team or the run directors to perform that role. Let's put it out to the public. Let's put it out to the 
the parkrun community and say, who wants to do this? And I reckon it'll be a popular role. And it's good that it's being done every week because, um, yeah, I reckon there's a few events that send people off down the path and um, they're not really sure where they're sending them. Or they don't realise that there's a, a tree branch down across the path you yeah. know, halfway along and things like that. Yeah, yeah. So there you go. There's a bit of news for you. Um, thanks for that, Mel. Still making you work even though you're on uh, maternity leave. Yeah, well, you know, you can you can you can take the uh, what's the word? How how can I express this? You can take the volunteer out of parkrun, but you can't take the parkrun out of volunteer. No, that's probably not quite right. Yeah. That's baby brain. Yeah, close enough. You I know what you, know what you mean. I know what you mean. Yeah. Once yeah, a volunteer, yeah. always a volunteer. go back to season one of the Parkrun Adventures, we caught up with Dr. Steve Hake, who was the head of the Parkrun Global Research Board. Four years later, we're going to inject a bit of an Aussie influence into it with Aussie Dr. Lindsay Reese. Welcome to the Parkrun Adventures, Lindsay. Hello. Great. Thank you for having me. Now, that's a very unique Aussie accent. Um <laughs> You're you're the you're on the global research board, but you're based here in Australia. But you are British as well. I am, yes. Um, sadly, my accent gave me away. Um, and I actually used to work with Steve Hate back at Sheffield Hallam, um, who hosts the Global Research Board. So um, it's great that I can kind of feed on from his podcast way back when. Yep. So uh, we, when we talked to Steve, it was a fascinating talk about um, research and how what role it plays within Parkrun. Can you just give us a, a refresher for everybody who wasn't listening four years ago? Um, what is the role of the Global Research Board? So the Global Parkrun Research Board essentially has been set up to help um, support Parkrun globally, like talk to the academic community, um, and I, I oversee kind of high quality research that happens around the world, which kind of puts simply is about all the kind of data and all the stories that come through different countries um, that engage with Parkrun, how we actually use that to tell the Parkrun story. Um, and Steve Haight chairs that research board. And that research board is kind of, it's made up of um, a range of different people, um, some of them academics and research geeks like myself. Um, but we've also got kind of practitioners and clinicians on there as well to really get like a real broad, um, a broad skill mix. And I kind of sit on it from the Australia's perspective. Um, and the benefit of having that kind of influence from different countries is that obviously there are certain stories that you want to tell that are more relevant to some countries than others. And how do you get involved, Lindsay? Like, at what point did you join the research board and how did that all come about? Yeah, great question. So uh, essentially, I actually worked at Sheffield Hallam, where the chair of the research board sits, um, a couple of years ago. When the global board was much smaller, um, and when it was starting like building momentum, and then um, through some other research I was doing around kind of health and well-being and um, the role that physical activity plays in like helping people live healthier lives, I was invited to be a part of it to kind of help them tell the park run story. And I guess the individuals all came together at different points. And then last year um, we actually had a bit of a refresh and a bit of a stock take, and that was led by Steve to kind of say, "Is the board operating as we want it to be? Have we got?" the right people around the table um so we were invited back on last year and that's where that kind of coincided with my move to australia which was very exciting so i could kind of have the benefit of seeing how it um began in in england and then obviously with my role here in sydney it was really great to then still be a part of it to kind of share some of the australian stories which i found really really fascinating so Lindsay, the the idea that park run plays this role it's a 5k run every saturday morning um, why do why do we need a research board, and, and what impact is that having beyond Parkrun? Can you can you elaborate on that at all? Yeah, for sure. So there's a lot of academics and um, clinicians out there that that kind of work with individuals on a daily basis that have um, different chronic diseases or are kind of um, wanting to become more physically active. And I guess Parkrun is a real great example of probably one of the only community led physical activity. 
um, events that happens globally around the world. And within that, there's many of us that are really interested to explore well, what role Parkrun has in helping people live healthier lives. And we know that people, if you're kind of inactive or if you're from um, different areas of the kind of countries, um, it's actually hard for you to come, become, become more physically active. And also some people don't always realise the benefits of being active and kind of moving in your everyday life and the impact that can have on health and well-being. So the benefits that Park can have is, yes, I'm sure loads of people turn up on Saturday morning and get involved for their own individual reasons. And actually, it's all those kind of individual reasons that we're really interested in exploring, because if Parkrun can really help people come together, meet people in their local area, um, and it, it kind of has so much broader benefits than just being seen as a 5K walk or run. Um, people, and I'm sure like all the different stories we've heard around the world, of people saying, I've made friends, um, I feel better in myself, people that have had a cancer diagnosis saying it enabled them to kind of build up after treatment. There's all those powerful stories. And the reason the research is so important is that anything that can help us contribute to the knowledge and evidence that clinicians use every day or anything that can kind of be used to help people become more active, that's really powerful. And how does the research, um, like the particular topics and the things like that that gets focused on, how does that get arrived at? As the research board, do you guys like keep an eye out for people who are working in particular fields? Are they approaching you? Is it 50-50? Yeah, so essentially the board has a cut. So Parkrun globally decided there was a couple of priorities in this space. And that kind of comes from um, a lot of evidence and a lot of insights that tells us that People are physic where there's certain factors in life that influence whether somebody's physically active or not. For example, we know that um, people from um, uh, communities where English isn't a first language, um, from communities that are quite disadvantaged and deprived, um, disabled people, we know that there are certain barriers in place that stop them from being active. So some of the priorities around where we should research and where we should be focusing some of our efforts in working with those communities to get them more active, they really drive our priorities. So within that, children and young people are really critical, engagement and the impact on Park One in reaching some of those communities that um, I just mentioned, and also kind of exploring some of the um, you know, the value, kind of what value is Park One giving back to communities, whether that's social value, whether that's economics. So I guess we've got a few priorities that um, as an organisation, Park One have kind of prioritised. And then what we do is obviously we have um, very clear processes. So if any academic or researcher or clinician wants to do research with Park Run, um, they complete like a, an expression of interest form that comes to the board and then we review those applications. So we've kind of set priorities that Park Run are proactively pursuing and then we also get individuals coming to us to say I've got an area um, of interest or I've got significant expertise in for example volunteering in sport um, can I kind of do a piece of work on this so it's a little bit of like it's a 50 50 I would say and we really encourage people to get in touch with us if they're interested in doing research and then we have those processes in place which kind of help us then guide our resource and um, then help us kind of select which research we um, support and which ones we don't. So with all these applications coming in and you're reviewing them, you must come across some that are a bit like left field, outside of the (laughs) box thinking. Can you share any of those with us? Like the ones that Parkrun hasn't thought about already, but somebody wants to do some research on? Oh, that's a really interesting one. So nothing really comes to mind. I guess we sometimes get very specific projects that are – very very kind of in a very niche area so some people do kind of phds on very very um targeted research whether it's you know a certain way the knee moves or um you know a really finite um area of like knee osteoarthritis so we do get some quite technical um technical projects in um but you know what nothing really left field comes to mind i have to say um the majority I've had, I've had lately have kind of been around volunteering. So sometimes you see kind of waves, you see kind of trends of projects coming through. And I think in Australia particularly, there's a real trend to look at um, volunteering. Um, I think more and more we're kind of looking at the benefits of the benefits of volunteering can give you against health and well-being and um, social connectedness and meeting new people. That's an area that is actually fairly under-researched. Um, and through some work that we've kind of done with sport, we see some sports really struggling to recruit volunteers. Yet Park Run, it, it's purely delivered by volunteers. So I think we've seen probably more volunteering proposals coming through maybe in the Australian setting. Um, or I've definitely had more conversations where they've actually translated into into a application, I'm not sure. Um 
but yeah, you definitely see kind of like trends and peaks and troughs of certain areas coming through. But no, sorry, I can't think of a really crazy left field one. We must have a lot of sane people <laughs> who, who want to get into the research and things like that. Lindsay, you're a doctor. I'm, I'm not even sure what you're a doctor of, but, you know, you got the PhD or the, the DR or the MD. Well, no, you probably don't have an MD um, because I'm assuming it's academic. But what what is your field of expertise and, and why are you particularly interested in the research that we do around Parkrun itself? Yeah, so, um, yeah, I'm definitely someone might say not a real doctor. Um, yes, yeah, so why did my PhD... PhDs are still um, real doctors. <laughs> you just don't have to get up when somebody's, you know, choking on a plane. Exactly. Do you know what? The plane, the plane example always comes up. Like, I know the plane, like, we got a doctor on board. I'm like, oh, don't look at me. <laughs> um, <laughs> um, my, my PhD was actually in, um, was working with teenagers who are severely obese um, uh, back in England, um, and that's actually a few years ago now, and was actually working to kind of help them kickstart weight loss to kind of prevent them having weight loss surgery. So that kind of sounds um, a little bit kind of a bit removed from Park Run. But essentially my interest has always been throughout my career in different jobs is always the, the role that physical activity plays in improving health. Um, and that sounds really broad, but um, I guess it's kind of looking at the health and well-being outcomes. Like physical activity, I think we all have um, stories. And I think that's where Park Run is so powerful. Um, have stories about how it's helped us in one way or another or a different time of life. Um, so my passion all the way through has been like what role we can use or how we can use physical activity to um, improve people's lives. And then also we know that some people aren't as active as others. And for me, it's about how we can raise awareness and we support them to become active. And that was my real engagement. What I loved about Parkrun was that it was so simple. Um, it was so easy. It's in the local community. And it just brings people together in a way that um, you rarely see every single week. And I think it's probably one of the only examples where it has it's delivered the same all around the world. And I find that really fascinating. And just kind of take going to different Parkruns myself, um, the amazing people that you meet in the stories just always reinforce how important it is that we keep people moving. Um, so that's kind of what's driven my career. Um, is how I can kind of keep people moving in a way that they enjoy. And I think what I love about Parkrun is just seeing the smiles on people's faces. Um, and and re I actually only started volunteering for Parkrun a couple uh, a couple of years. So I actually broke my ankle last year, and I've always kind of jogged Parkrun. And then um, after breaking my ankle, I was silly enough to fall off a bike. Um, I actually then started volunteering and kind of walking. So I've, in the last year, I've kind of engaged with Parkrun in a different way. And um yeah, it's been really, really helpful for me. I was going to ask you about that, Lindsay. So tell us a bit about Lindsay, the park runner, because you did. You had a really rough injury. Um, I've seen you walking around in crutches and a moon boot. So you haven't been running as such. So what has park run given to you in that during that time of your injury? Yeah, so I was silly enough to fall off my bike last July. And, yeah, I was kind of um, – Is that while your yeah, ankle I was, in was a broken? Because the way you said it before, it sounded like you broke your ankle and then you were silly enough to fall off a bike. And it's like, well, if you're silly enough to ride a bike with a broken ankle, I think the second thing's going to happen. <laughs> no, sorry. So, um, yeah, no, I, I had uh, an accident on my bike where I fell off and, uh, yeah, really busted my ankle quite badly um had to have an operation have some screws and plates put in my ankle um which meant I was um not weight bearing so I couldn't I basically sitting down for um a couple of weeks so six to eight weeks and um I did actually get a mobility scooter which is one of those ones that looks like a kid's scooter where you kind of put your your bad leg kind of on the um on the top and then you kind of use your good leg to kind of wheel you along so they get kind of raced by some kids but what that enabled me to do was actually get out of the house um, and that was the biggest thing that Park kind of enabled me to do. Um, I've always kind of walked and jogged and loved being outside, and that's been really critical for me. And um, having an accident like that where you sat inside and your world shrinks quite quickly, um, Park Run really allowed me to get out of the house, feel I was still part of something, and still help others while I was kind of on my crutches and, and on my scooter. And actually what's been really nice is people at my local Park Run have seen me, like, get better. So first of all, I'd kind of go down my scooter then I would kind of be in my moon boot on crutches. Um, and I managed to go back to Park Run about a month ago where I'm kind of like walk, I'm like walking and doing like a little bit of a shuffle in between. Um, and now it's really helping me kind of give me a goal each week 
um, to kind of strive towards and kind of keep me focused. And um, yeah, so I've, it's, it's been a different way to engage a park run, I have to say, because before that I would turn up and I would just jog, um, where the volunteering aspect and feeling a part of something was really powerful for me personally. Um, and I've thoroughly enjoyed the volunteering side of it. And um, yeah, it was a huge help to me. And still is, because I'm still not running or jogging. So, Do you think your personal experiences might sway you a bit towards, I mean, I know you said that there's already a, a big focus on volunteering, but volunteering for people with injuries and how that can help their uh, recovery? Because I know it, I, I, I either hear it one way or the other. People come along and volunteer while they're injured because they don't want to miss out on that community aspect. But then there are a lot of people who get injured and they just can't cope with seeing all the fit and able people running and they want to get out and do that. So they kind of stay away for the same reasons. Yeah, that's a, that's a, that's a really interesting question. And I have to say, like, it, it, yeah, it's definitely not easy. Um, and it definitely kind of was, in the, and I guess now when I'm kind of going down and I'm, and I'm kind of walking and jogging, it's really hard to kind of think actually, and you kind of, you know, you look, um, I kind of wear trainers, I haven't got my ankle brace on. So now when I go down externally, it looks like everything's okay. Um, so yeah, it, I guess it, I find it probably a little bit harder now, um, because it's still trying to find my place, if you like. Um, but I totally understand people that when they're injured wouldn't like to go down and because, you know, they're jealous and they're kind of, they want to be a part of it and it kind of highlights what they're missing. But I think based on like my personal experience where I genuinely felt it helped, um, don't get me wrong, the first few times you go down, you might be kind of thinking, I wish I was out there and um, wasn't injured. But I would really encourage people to give it a whirl. And I think in terms of the volunteering aspect, that's definitely um, opened my eyes up to probably a different side of Parkrun. Um, and even just chatting to the volunteers, every volunteer has got a different aspect. So sometimes I hear people, they engage with volunteering first and then they start kind of participating themselves because they're a bit scared to take part. But then actually volunteering was a way to get involved in Parkrun and then build up the confidence to actually take part. Whereas I've also heard people do it the other way around where they walk and jog um, at their local park run and then they really want to be a part of the team that helps deliver that each week. So then they've kind of done some volunteering after that. So, yeah, I think there's, there's, mixed, there's mixed reasons. But that for me is what makes the park run community so special is that everyone's, whether they like I share it with other people or not, everyone's kind of got their own reasons for going down. Um, and I guess for me, linking that back to the research is how we then use that to really like tell the stories of people that engage with Park Run to help us learn how we can continue to improve Park Run, but also like how we can understand which bits work, like how we get people engaged and how it helps them in their own lives, and then use that information to help us either set up new Park Runs in communities that don't currently have it, or use those stories to really share with other industries, other clinicians, other chronic disease, um, to really kind of help them integrate that to help get more people moving. Because the sad fact of the matter is most people around the world are not active enough. So anything that we can use to inform policies, strategies, governments, health sectors, transport planning, anything we can do to share that back to kind of say this is how we can get more people moving is really powerful. Couldn't agree with you more. I think you guys are doing a fabulous job. And we really appreciate the fact, Lindsay, that you're volunteering in this capacity on the research board as well. We know you bring a lot to the table and that everybody involved is doing a lot of good for Parkrun behind the scenes. It's just another one of the cogs in the big wheel that people don't realise are turning all the time. So thank you for doing that. And thank you for joining us on the podcast this week to share a little bit of what's involved from the Australian perspective. It's been an absolute pleasure. Thank you very much for having me. Hello, Parkrun adventurers and Parkrun listeners. <laughs> We are at Lancefield's first anniversary park run, and the run, well, the park run is underway. And I'm standing here with Erin, who's the event director who got all this going, with Duffman, Brendan Foster. No, Brendan <laughs> Zock. Who's Brendan Foster? Who is Brendan? Oh my married. God, yes! <laughs> Sorry. Congratulations. By <laughs> the power invested in me by park run. <laughs> park run marriage. <laughs> and also here with Alison. So, Erin, how's the first 12 months been for you know, Lancefield Park Run? Way better than we thought it was going to be. <laughs> it's <laughs> awesome. We have so many volunteers and in winter it's really cold, but in summer it's lovely. <laughs> um, 
yeah, it's just great. So has that been the highlight, do you think, the volunteers? Yeah, yeah. definitely, yeah. I think. Um, the way that the runners, they come every week and then they kind of just go, oh, you know, I might actually give volunteering a go and they end up loving it and wanting to volunteer every week, which is pretty awesome. Yeah. And coffee afterwards. Coffee afterwards is really good. Now, <laughs> a lot of people, we have a real little community out here now, which yeah. is lovely. And I noticed the, the statue or the carving of the megafauna out on course. Do you know much about the megafauna? Yes, a little bit. Alison probably knows more than me. <laughs> so um, they found megafauna fossils um, actually on our course um, at the back near, there near the equestrian reserve. So they found them, I think in the 70s, don't quote me on that, might be wrong. Okay. Um, and yeah, they've, there's been a lot of like research papers and stuff written about them. And yeah. So I think every park run is great and every park run is good, but we can officially say that Lansfield Park Run is mega. Yeah, mega. We have dinosaur bones. Cool. <laughs> mega fauna bones. Yes. And oh, Alison. Oh, sorry, not dinosaurs. <laughs> mega fauna bones. <laughs> they came, they came after the, the dinosaurs. Did they? Yeah. Oh, okay. Or okay. <laughs> closer to our timeline, I should say. Yeah. Uh-huh. So we have giant kangaroo. Yep. So Alison's the person to speak to about the megafauna. <laughs> I just know I just know it's politically incorrect to call them dinosaurs. <laughs> and so you come on as an RD, Alison? Run director? Yeah. Yes, yeah, so I've done it a couple of times, absolutely. <laughs> um, helped out where I can, whatever needs doing. I'm happy to help. And how did you hear about Parkrun? I got uh, roped in, <laughs> yeah, roped in in the early days by Erin. Um, and, you know, it's a fantastic opportunity to get our community out and about, get everyone moving. Um, totally different people are here than volunteering in all the other capacities. Um, and we've created a real beautiful community here, and I, I love it. It's great. Yeah. Excellent. And do you, do you get a chance to get out and have a run yourself? Or a not, walk? Not, yeah, wa- walking at the moment, unfortunately. Um, not as often as I would like, you know, got family and work commitments and all that, so I don't get here as often as I would like to, but yeah, it's great to know it's here and get here as much as I can. Great. And Brendan, so today's theme at Lansfield Park Run is superheroes, yes. and we have Duffman, and he's looking the superhero. He's got little holders here for cans, but they're... Ca- Cans of carbohydrates, surely. <laughs> um, how long have you been park running for? This is my third year. Yeah. Started in, in Bendigo, and I've done many in Highlands. Okay. With the great Gary. <laughs> and then found uh, Lanshill's my closest one, so I, I found it on Facebook and here I am. Yeah. And you've also been doing some run directing here? I have. Awesome. Um, um, she's done pretty much all of it from the start for about six months, and um, she said, could you do it one day? And I did. Fantastic, mate. Good on you. Yeah, thanks for your help. That's really great. And we're, we're standing here in front of some amazing cakes. Erin, who, who made our cake? Um, so Nadine made our cakes. She spent a whole week making cakes and capes because we have our, our capes. Our right? Lancefield capes. So before, Lansfield capes. So before the briefing, um, the event team stood up and um, they've all got their superhero capes on and each member has a different letter that's spelt out Lansfield, so that was fantastic. And the cakes have all got um, happy birthday on them, and um, what's that, like a violet crumble cake? It looks like it, it looks amazing. Honeycomb. Nadine's one of our regular volunteers, she ran every week, and then she got injured, which was terrible for her, great for us, and she's volunteered every week since. Wow. So, <laughs> we're very lucky to have her, and Bryce, Bryce is our park runner of the year, so that's um, Nadine's partner. And Johnny Nightingale, everywhere I go I hear about John and um, he's done a really great effort this year in helping out. Yeah, so this is his 46th um, volunteer. I don't think he'd heard of Park Run before we started this. I'm not quite sure how he got involved. I think I was just talking about needing volunteers one day and he was, oh, I'll come help out. I'll do photos. And um, yeah, I think he's missed two. So he's, <laughs> wow. he's pretty awesome. Yeah. yeah. It's pretty good. Well, thanks, Erin, for getting this all off the ground and congratulations. Thank you. Good thanks luck for, for the, the next 200, 300, whatever it may be. And um, happy anniversary. Thank you. All right, now, we're, we're still at Lansfield Park Run and we're in the afterglow of the, the finish of Park Run. And I'm standing here with John, your surname, John? John Nightingale. John Nightingale. And John was our photographer for today. And everywhere I go when I talk about Lansfield Park Run, John, I hear about the legendary photographer from Lansfield Park Run. So I'm oh, that's nice to hear. Finally glad yeah. to meet you. So how did you get involved in Park Run? Well, I've known Erin for years and years, and I was one of the many that watched Erin think about starting Park Run, then actually deciding to do it, and 
Somehow or other she got the funds to do it and she started it. And it was a single-handed job and it was magnificent. And I came along and I thought, what the hell, why do they start at eight? <laughs> and by the second week I thought, this is brilliant because it's eight o'clock, it's pretty much all over by nine, you've got the whole day in front of you, it's brilliant. Yeah. And the, one of the main things I like about it is how friendly everybody is. Yep. How many visitors there are. And fairly early on we had a guy down, flew all the way down from Brisbane. Outstanding. To, to Lanceville to do his 170th different <laughs> park run. Yep. And I thought that's brilliant. And I saw another day something that really grabbed my heart, which there were two girls running very close together. And then I noticed they were actually chained together. And then when you saw them going away, you saw that one was sight impaired or blind, I'm not sure which, and the other one was a guide. And I thought, what a wonderful thing that was. Outstanding. So yeah. someone from the Achilles helping a, a blind athlete? That's yeah. terrific. Really yeah. good, yeah. yeah. And so you take for the photos most week. Do you get a chance to yeah. go out and have a walk every now and then? Well, I walk during the week with my dog. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> and that's good enough for me. Okay, yeah. 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 Are you thinking about having a look at other park runs and travelling around to see what other park runs are about? Or you... Not particularly. Yep. And one of the things for me is it's like it's a community service thing that I can do, and I haven't done a lot in my past, so um, it's nice for that point of view. Yeah. I got invited to do the photography for uh, Massenden Ranges Running Club's seasonal 10-kilometre run the other day, and that yeah. went, went all right, yeah. so maybe other people will ask and then I can think about it. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah. thanks for talking to me, John. That's fantastic, You're welcome. Wayne. Appreciate your story. And thank you for your awesome contribution to Lansfield Park Run. Well, good on Park Run. <laughs> <laughs> thanks, John. Okay, thank you. It's still happening here. There's, I heard some laughter and chattering over in the corner, and I wanted to join in on all the fun. Mm -hmm. So I've come over and I've introduced myself to Ashley, Haley, Cindy, Jody, Narelle. And how did the park run go this morning for you ladies? Good. I think maybe a new PB. Wow. Yeah. There was lots of PBs yeah. this morning. I think it was the superhero capes might have uh, <laughs> maybe made us run a bit, bit faster. And how did you go? I uh, ran the whole way, which was good. Wow. So, yeah. <laughs> Always what, a good thing. And what's your favourite thing about park run? Uh, just getting out and being able to be by myself with the, without kids <laughs> and then catching up with friends. <laughs> and the catch-ups are great. Yep. Thanks for letting me join in. <laughs> and how did you go this morning? pretty good. I did exercise before so I was a bit tired so I just walked. Good on you. Yeah. That's fantastic. What did you do this morning? Uh, a 20 minute hip workout. Wow, fantastic. And how did you start in park run? Um, slowly. <laughs> <laughs> how did you hear about it maybe is a better question. Oh, how did I hear about it? Um, probably just Facebook. Okay. Is how I heard about it, yeah. yeah. And what do you love about it? Same as Haley, I can get out without the children. <laughs> Although I don't always, so often, sometimes I do have the kids with me. Yeah. Try to push them in the pram. Yeah. Oh, what's your favourite part of the course? The finish line. It <laughs> <laughs> doesn't take much thinking. <laughs> but I was talked into this from one of my daughters and her friends. Yeah. yeah so they've got me inspired. And do they park run here, or are they from another park run? From here. Okay. Yeah. yeah Great. Yeah. Oh, well, thanks for talking to me, ladies. <laughs> thank you very and much. Thanks for coming to Lansfield's first anniversary. <laughs> and I like your muscles. <laughs> oh, thank you. I worked for minutes on those. <laughs> Good idea. We should have run off the coffee sooner. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, now, before they run off, <laughs> I'm here with Nadine and Bryce. Now, Nadine has made an awesome cake for us today because at anniversaries, you know, there has to be cake. And... What was it? Was it? Uh... That was a. It was a golden gay time cake. So it was a white chocolate mud um, with a malted buttercream, chocolate ganache, and honeycomb. Wow, <laughs> it was spectacular. Thank you. And there were a lot of PVs today, and we reckon that having that at the finish line was a great incentive. <laughs> yeah, you got to run for cake. <laughs> So thank you very much for that, Nadine. No that worries. was awesome. And, you, and you've been a run director at Lansfield now? I have, yeah, about four times, and I'm run directing next week. Good on you. Yeah. How you found it? Good? Yeah, I like it. Um, it's helped with the public speaking as well, because I've always been terrified of that. So <laughs> having such a good community, you can kind of get up and talk to everyone, and no one's judging you, and it makes it really good. Yeah. Ah, oh, that's good. And, yeah, it's a good, um, a good crowd to do public speaking at, because everyone's on your side. <laughs> exactly. <so it's> <laughs> exactly. 
And Bryce, how did you go today, mate? Good, yeah. I think I got a PB, so good morning for it. Yeah. Now, you can help me because on the podcast, I haven't put in a, a course description. So can you give me a rundown on what the course is? Oh, how thorough do you want me to be? <laughs> no, it can be simple or it can be elaborate. It's up to you. We run around the outside of the park, then we do three laps over that way. I know you can't see where I'm pointing, but that's okay. In the equestrian but, area. Yeah. And then we run back again. So three laps is a good number. Yeah. You can sort of keep it in your head. And for new people, it's any more than three laps is probably a little bit hard to keep track of where you are. But okay. Yeah. And it's pretty flat? Very flat. Yeah. yeah. It's perfect. Yeah. And there's plenty of shade as well in summer, so it keeps you cool. Yeah. yeah. And all on gravel? Or... Yeah, a nice granitic sand. It's great to run on. Yeah. 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 Cool. And at, at the pre-run briefing this morning, uh, you got an award... For yeah, Park Run of the Year for Lansfield. So congratulations, yeah, I was mate. Pretty pumped with that. Well done, buddy. <laughs> thanks, man. Thanks for a great contribution to Lansfield. Oh no, it makes you feel good. So. And you've been run directing too? No, 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 no. No, I'm oh, we'll, still lucky. We'll work on that. We'll yeah, work we'll, on that. Maybe one day. <laughs> we'll see how we go. Set up. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, well, thanks very much, guys. Yeah. Thanks for talking to me. Thank you. And all the best for the future Park Run. Yeah, you too. Thank Gary. you. Thanks, Gary Murphy from the Great Estate visiting Lansfield Park Run. Which Mel, I'm going to put that on my hit list. I'm going to put that right at the top. I want to get there soon. It's close enough to me. It's not quite my nindy, but uh, Gary's made it even more enticing for me to visit. What is your nindy these days, Scotty? Uh, I think it's a little event called KM Reedy, which I, I heard a little bit about at Berwick Springs on Saturday and um, makes me super keen to get down to visit that as well. Okay, cool. Yeah. Now, anniversaries. No, let's do launches because we talked about this last week. Got a few people excited. <laughs> White Mark Wharf in Tasmania, but really Flinders Island. Yeah. and Well, look, I guess Flinders Island is Tasmania. It is. It, well, it's an island off the coast of Tasmania, classified as in the Tasmanian state. Um, this is a funny one. I don't know if you've seen chatter about it in the forums on social media, Scotty, but people seem really confused and think it's a lot more difficult to get to than it actually is. And they're all talking about, you know, flights and um, and chartering planes and stuff. But it's like, guys, you can just catch a ferry across, you know. Um, I'm not sure they realise they can catch a ferry across. Yes, there are limited oh, ferry times, but it's... um. Yeah, so there's there's heaps of people who obviously are keen to go. New event in Tasmania. It's been a little while since we had a launch down that way. Um, and it's in a beautiful location, of course. You, I'm gonna look at chartering a flight. Yeah, you're gonna you're gonna like yep. hire a plane and share it with ten other people. I think so. This is the next Westerfoldian road trip <laughs> down to White Mark Wharf Park Run. Nice. That's it's gonna be an awesome weekend. Okay. Yep. I can't wait. So to we hear look about look it. forward to hearing about that. Yeah, well, well, on next week's show, we're going to do. Here's another tease for next week. We're going to do a state of the nation update. It's been a while since we did one of those, hasn't it? It has. So we're going to be super keen to hear from Chris Timms, who would have been to White Mark Wharf, and she can tell us all about it um, on next week's pod. So yes, she's been there, she's sure been there listen. once already. I'm not sure she must be heading back again for the launch. Um, anniversaries this week, we've got Cobar in New South Wales, Coburg in Victoria. Euroa in Victoria and Jubilee Way in South Australia. Portland, Victoria, Roma, Queensland. Tari in New South Wales and Varsity Lakes in Queensland. Varsity Lakes, home of my parkrun PB. Is it? It is, yes. The old home of parkrun, but... Um, Fond memories for me because that's where I've got my PB. Hmm. I should I should have a crack at that course at some point. You know, when I'm not carrying an extra several hundred feelings of kilos. <laughs> yeah, because um, yeah, it's, it's a, if you can get a PB there, maybe I could get a PB there. Yeah, you should come back, Mel. You should come back as the new Sinead Diver. You know, she started when she was in her late 30s, I think, coming as a mum, as a running mum. Maybe this is this is your future. Maybe I'm going to be a really speedy athlete. Is that what you're trying to say? Yeah. You know, it's really cute. Wes is learning so many words at the moment, and his latest thing to do is run around the house screaming, fast boy, fast boy. Uh, <laughs> it's so funny because what he thinks is fast is just so cute. And, um, yeah, it's not going to be much longer that Adam's going to be able to keep him in the pram at Park Run. He's going to want to get out and get on the grounds and go for it. Really? Yeah, definitely. 
good. I still, I still think he's a bit young for 5K. Well, I agree. But... He's not quite two yet. He's too young for a barcode. So, um, yes, challenges are on the way, but it's fun. Oh, it doesn't stop some people, no, you know. it doesn't. Let's wrap 156 here, Mel. Uh, the cliffhanger next for next week's episode is, well, I've already given it away. It's State of the Nation, so we're going to be hearing from all around the country, speaking to all our awesome ambassadors who are going to give us a lowdown on new events coming up, uh, any special events, anniversaries, anything of interest coming up. Still looking for that elusive X park run. Yes. We'll see if we can unearth well, yeah. it next week. <laughs> We're going to be speaking to the ambassador at Malaysia, so we'll get an update there. I wonder if they've got any ex park runs. I mean, they've got some funny names over in Malaysia, so maybe. Well. Who knows? You never know. You never know, Scotty. Um, but that's, that's it. it. Let's, let's say goodbye. Thank you for dragging yourself. Um, I'm assuming you've spent some time in bed over the last few days, so thank you for dragging yourself out of bed to record a podcast with me. I appreciate your uh, dedication, and I will remember it when I deliver a baby and um, and decide whether or not I can podcast immediately afterwards. Okay. Okay. Look forward to it. Speak to you next week, maybe. Could be fun. Hey, you know they've got Wi-Fi at the hospital, so... Ha, 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 ha.